see everybody. Did everybody enjoy the four seasons today? It was great, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. Got a nice little sunshine to top off the day. What a great way to finish off the evening. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Let's grab our hymn books. We're going to go to number 21 in our red songbook on Wednesday evening. Number 2, 1 at Calvary. We'll sing the first, third, and fourth verse of number 21 at Calvary. What a wonderful place our, where our Savior died. Let's sing about it on the first at Calvary. Sing it with me. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. And That drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. place at Calvary where our Savior died, where our sins, the payment for our sins was was paid once and for all. Amen. Amen. What's the bow for prayer? And we'll continue. Brother Ramsey, do you mind praying for us? Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Amen. Have you been blessed? Let's sing about it. Number 20. Go to number 20. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. In college, our, our, uh, the college chapel song leader, when we would play the, when we would sing this song, he would, uh, during the chorus, count your blessings, name them one by one count your blessings, see what God hath done. He would stop the music and he would call right there in chapel. Have you been blessed? Have you been, tell us your blessing. Tell us your blessing. So maybe I won't. Maybe I will. I don't know. So just be ready, all right? Let's sing on the first, second, and fourth verse. Number 20, count your blessings. On the first. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your Blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. Go singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over home. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. 
Help and comfort give you to your journeys and count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen, amen. Our enemy wants us to get so focused, so focused on the molehill that we're in front of, the, 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 the negative thing that we're in front of. God says, step back. Step back, get a better view, get a better perspective. He's been really good to us. Amen. What other place do you get all four seasons in one day? Amen. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm hearing, what is it, snow tomorrow? <laughs> so, you know, we can go from sunshine to possible snow tomorrow. Amen. Amen. A few announcements and then we'll get into our prayer time this evening. Uh, thank you so much for your faithfulness. It is a great encouragement to, to me. Um, and uh, the Lord is very pleased, so just, uh, I just want to commend you on that. Um, the food pantry was restocked today, so if you want to stop by after the service this evening, uh, feel free to stop by. Um, and please, please, if you have somebody in mind that, that maybe could be a benefit uh, from some of this stuff, I know there's some meat in there, there's some milk and cheese and, and uh, some good fruits and veggies, so uh, if, you, if you know somebody else who could benefit from it, feel free to grab something from them. I just, I hate to see stuff that is so close to date um, not being used. So uh, please, that, that way other people can benefit from it and it doesn't just go to waste. So, but it was right restocked today. Um, Easter Sunday, we're having a, an Easter candy hunt for the children. And uh, if you would be willing to participate and, uh, or, or help with the individually wrapped candy, um, please, uh, if you could help, that would be great. So we would need that by uh, the, that Sunday morning. So uh, the, the, you could be any kind of individual wrap candy. So that's uh, Easter Sunday, e April 17th. And also we're doing the, we're doing the uh, flowers in memory of a loved one. And uh, hun, please remind me, uh, we need to do ours. Um, so if you are wanting to, to get a flower in memory of a loved one, please make sure that, that we have that in by this, uh, this Sunday. And that way we can get the order in and uh, have it here for Easter Sunday. So that's a week from Sunday is Easter, if you can believe it. Um, also, don't forget that starting this next Sunday, uh, th this, I'm sorry, this Sunday, the 10th through the 17th of Easter, we're doing the track, uh, track sharing campaign. And it's just for this week. It's uh, the churches of Michigan, but we're also churches around the United States that, that are participating in, in this as well. So... Um, Let's do a good job and, and uh, keep up the great work. Everybody did a good job. So there are some stacks of tracks, uh, stacks of six tracks um, out there. And, uh, you know, the first one's five points. Everyone's a point after that. And then we'll collect all the numbers on, on Sunday and send in our total to our team captain. So, um, but they're, they're in the foyer on the banister. And uh, if you haven't grabbed one, please, please grab one. Um, the, the spring program this, this year is going to be a missions emphasis month. And uh, if you would just be in prayer that, that the Lord would speak to our hearts. So uh, the first week of the spring program will be Easter. We'll be having a special time together. And then the 24th, we'll have Brother Don Sturtz. We've been supporting him. He's with Couriers for Christ. And uh, he's, uh, he's been one of the church's uh, uh, missionaries for, for many years. He'll be with us on the 24th all day. And the next week on May 1st, we'll have Brother uh, Zach Rousseau and his wife Elizabeth. They'll be with us. And, uh, and so be in prayer for that. They're starting a church in Pelham, New Hampshire. They're already there. They've, uh, he's been serving uh, in a church in New York. He's from the New York area, the upstate New York area. And so he's been serving in a church there, and the Lord opened this opportunity for him to take this, this uh, church mission or church plant and to, to take it and to, to be their pastor. So it's a young work, so... Uh, uh, he's, he's been a faithful young man, and, and uh, Miss Elizabeth, she's been, she was raised in a, in a preacher's home. Uh, she's a pastor's daughter from uh, Burn, Indiana. Do you happen to know Brother uh, Combest? Uh, Combest? Burn, Indiana? Okay. Yeah, he's, he was there for probably 25, 30 years uh, over in the um, northeast Indiana area. If you know where Burn, Indiana, probably uh, south of uh, Shipshawana area if I'm not mistaken. So 
but um, but uh, that's that's his wife and a great couple, great uh, great uh, young couple. So uh, be in prayer for that. They'll be with us on May first. Then we'll have Mother's Day. Uh, we we have a special gift for all the mothers, and uh, we're gonna um, uh, give them a little special gift to tell, to tell them thank you. Also, we have Brother Patterson. He'll be with us on May fifteenth. That'll be our friend day. We are um, also be thinking about people that we could put on our friend day prayer list. And we'll be putting that in uh, um, Easter Sunday. We'll be uh, passing those out. So uh, if you know of somebody and you could, and you could, um, uh, do we have those, by the way? Are they ready? Okay, we'll have them, we'll have them Sunday. So then we can, we can um, be preparing to, to get, pass out a friend day prayer list. If, you, if the Lord has laid somebody on your heart and you would like to put them on the prayer list, then we can be praying with you and, uh, and uh, help see if they can come on friend day. And I uh, think uh, we're almost finalized what we're going to do on friend day as far as the lunch is concerned but i think this is going to be good and uh, delicious so also uh, we'll be having a ladies luncheon on saturday may 14th and mrs marty marcy patterson will be the guest speaker uh, and then her husband will be preaching to us all day on sunday so uh, so actually it says here a soup and sandwich luncheon will follow the morning service and uh, the ushers have forms to fill out and turn in for the friends that, uh, that you invite or that you want us to pray for. And uh, we will be praying as a church for those who are on that list. And uh, we're going to be having a good time. And then that evening, we are going to be having a little time of fellowship as well. So um, after the, the evening service, so I think that's it. All right, let's go to our prayer time. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, I'll... Uh, give you a, a couple of announcements or a couple of updates. And all right. Be in prayer for Eugene Pickford. Eugene Pickford, Mrs. Bunny's nephew. Uh, he still needs prayer. He is a uh, he has begun his round seven of his chemo, and uh, that's the halfway point. So uh, be in prayer for him. Also uh, be in prayer for Mrs. Toller uh, and, and Pastor. Uh, they've been uh, dealing with some extreme fatigue and uh, getting through this sickness. So be in prayer for them. Um, Mrs. Ramsey's family in England, be in prayer for them. They are recovering from... Uh, a sickness, and, but they're doing better, so be, we just continue to be in prayer for them, and uh, Mrs. Bunny uh, has an appointment with a hand surgeon on Monday, April 11th, so be in prayer for her. I've been overworking her. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, she's got a got an appointment, and then didn't Brother Bunny have, an, uh, have a test today? Was it just routine, I guess? Okay, all right, so uh, be in prayer for, for her. All right. Anybody else have a prayer request? Yes, Ms. Tompkins. All right. Ms. Tompkins is relaying an update on Tim Maynard, so be in prayer for him. He is not doing well and he is declining. His health is declining. So be in prayer for Tim Maynard. Tim Maynard. Yeah, sorry to hear about that. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, sir, Brother Larry. And what does he have again? What does he have again? Lymphoma. Okay. Is it Jason? 
Witherspoon. Okay, be in prayer for Jason Witherspoon as a friend of uh, Brother Ramsey. Uh, he's uh, in the hospital with lymphoma, so uh, be in prayer for him. And uh, he's getting some treatment at uh, Mott's Children's Hospital um, there in Ann Arbor. All right, anybody else? Be in prayer, continue praying for Nathan Berge, and uh, we've been praying for him the last couple weeks, and uh, um, just continue to be in prayer for him. Anybody else? Be in prayer for George Stapello. It's uh, Brother Tony's uncle, and he's having some health issues uh, in uh, New Jersey. So be in prayer for him. Anybody else? Anybody have a praise that they want to, a blessing? Is this thing about count your blessings? A blessing? Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am, Miss England. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. Anybody else? Something they want to praise the Lord about? Yeah. Or want to pray request? Yeah. Your father just passed away. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he was the president of Christ Children Hospital. And um, he was in the back and he was just trying to pray for anyone that would come to him. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And his uh, speech has gotten a lot of better. We, we think that he's been having a underwater um, ear issues like he's hearing things underwater and that's why he just couldn't you couldn't he had a lot to say but you couldn't tell what he was saying and uh, but it's it's slowly clearing up you're you're able to hear it I'm, I'm, if it does fully clear up the, you teachers better get ready for him he's gonna let you he's gonna be taking over your class now this is how it goes let us know if that happens we'll try to rein him in so but he's got a lot to say. Amen. Amen. But praise the Lord. That is a, that is a praise. We were, we were concerned about um, doing tubes, and, and uh, the Lord just saw fit to clear it up. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Anybody else? do that. We'll be in prayer. Brother Tony's asking prayer for George Stapallo, St Stapallo, Stapello, sorry, uh, George Stapello's uh, salvation, and uh, he's uh, praying that a soul winner will go by or that he would have the chance to, to be able to talk to him. So let's be in prayer that the God just orchestrates it perfectly. Um, so may his will be done. Anybody else have a request or a praise that they want to? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. So uh, Brother Enos is relating a, 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 a prayer request from the Robinettes. They have a neighbor who uh, had cancer, um, had it dealt with, and uh, uh, it was clear, but then now he's got something else coming up that's showing cancerous. So uh, his name is Dave. So if you would be in prayer for Dave and his health, it's uh, the Robinette's neighbor. So uh, Dave. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. All right. So I'm going to have uh, Miss Melissa uh, play a hymn softly while we um, pray with our spouse or with our prayer partner and, uh, and take these to the Lord in prayer. Okay.
Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together and take these requests to you, Lord. We do this because you asked us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so tenderhearted that you want to hear our prayers. Thank you for being willing to be with us, Emmanuel. Lord, I ask that you please, that you'd speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, please help us to, to, to step back, take a look at our Christian life, and to be willing to let the Holy Spirit point out areas where we need to grow, where we need to be stronger. Lord, if we surrender in those areas, you're going to help the light of Jesus Christ shine stronger in our lives and help us to have a stronger impact for you, draw more people to Jesus Christ, see more people, more people in heaven someday, change our society, change our area of the world. And like that song says, brighten the corner where we are. I pray that you please bless us tonight. Help us, Lord, as we uh, continue the service, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Please take control of the time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's grab our song books. We're going to go to number 16. Precious little song, The Way That He Loves. We'll sing both verses of number 16. Number 16. Think about the words as we sing. Join me on the first. The way that he loves is as fair as the day that blesses my way with light. The way that he loves is as soft as the breeze caressing the trees at night. So tender and precious is he Contented with Jesus I'll be The way that he loves Is so thrilling because His love reaches even me The way that he loves Is as deep as the sea his spirit shall be my stay. The way that he loves is as pure as a rose. Much sweeter he grows each day. His peace hovers near like a dove. I'll cling Life's a wonderful thing Because of the way He loves Howdy <laughs> Just saw a few feel deer tonight uh, On the way home Sunday night uh, There was like 28 in the Yard, just by the, and Kathy counted 60 field deer on the way home. One road deer. It's a s slow moving thing. It's like he wanted to. <laughs> There's a target. <laughs> Watching the old. Uh, tonight's letter is uh, from the painters, missionaries to Thailand. We know them. It's a pretty exciting letter. And it's kind of long, so I think I'll be able to get through it. Though. Dear Pastor, Hard to believe that we are starting the month of March already. I am continuing with my treatments, and I started some new therapy a couple of weeks ago that seems to be helping the joint pain that I have, ha that I have from my hemochromatosis. Uh, overall, it is just a matter of putting the time in for the treatments, still praying to return to Thailand by mid to late summer. Meanwhile, we are staying busy for the Lord on both fronts. Here at our home church, we started a Karen language Sunday school class and have seen a high day of 11 attend. Uh, we have seen Karen people trust Christ every week since we have started 
In fact, not only myself, but my wife and both my teen daughters have had the privilege to see visitors even come to church. My wife met a lady named Ta Meh, who is a Karenni letter uh, lady that, that she actually led to Christ back in 2015. She used to come to our church and has slipped through the cracks because of the language barrier. However, she has reunited with us, and my wife was able to lead her son to Christ this month. Special story. <laughs> it is, too. Uh, there was a lady named Plair Plair, P-L-E-R, Plair Plair, that my wife and her Karen soul winning uh, partner met out soul winning and signed the kids up to ride the bus. So I went to be with my translator and invited her... Uh, I went by with my translator and invited her to the adult care and Sunday school class. That's uh, the people of Thailand, uh, a group. She looked uh, very familiar to me. So as my interpreter was talking with her, I told him to ask her if she used to live in a different apartment building. He said that she just told him that I delivered her oldest child in 2015. <laughs> Back then, when I was a pastor here, I was out soul winning one Saturday morning with my daughter, Debbie. Suddenly, I was summoned inside an apartment building by another Karen lady to find Plair Plair in labor on the bathroom floor. <laughs> I called 911 and then delivered the baby before the paramedics arrived. <laughs> now the girl is six years old, and her name is Ku Gay Mu. She's the biggest child. Picture. There's a picture here. God is good to allow us to find. God is good to allow us to find them, and now they go to my home church. Praise the Lord. Ministry in Thailand. Pran is staying busy running as many things as he can. The area is currently being hit hard by the Omicron variant. Many of our people tested positive and, and have had to quarantine. Pran and his family have been sick as well, but their symptoms are mild and they didn't get tested, which is probably smart because the quarantine process is mandatory, usually into a government facility. page two. Pran and his family are better now, and he has been fired up to get the gospel out once again. Last Monday, he and his wife went to visit his wife's uncle who lives in Cha Am along the seaside. This is the uncle that I was able to lead to Christ last July, and he comes to church when he comes to visit Pran and his family. While they're visiting his wife's uncle, Pran gave the gospel to one of the Thai men working there along the seaside. The man trusted Christ as his savior. This was a great step for Pran as he doesn't prefer to witness in the Thai language. Thai is a third language for him, and even though he is fluent to speak it on the streets, it's much more difficult to use Bible words. I am thankful that the Lord has put a soul winner's heart in him and that he isn't just focused on the Karen people, but wanting to see all people coming to the Savior. Speaking of all people, Pran is continuing to visit and hold Bible studies at the Burmese work camp. In fact, this month, Six Burmese souls trusted Christ as their savior. This is also a great thing, as typically many Karen people consider the Burmese people to be their enemies because of the persecu persecution that has taken place in Burma. It continues to show a person's soul, winning, soul winner's heart when they have a desire to reach a people group that many would consider contrary to their people group. As far as the ministry that's going on there with the Burmese, I am praying about what we can possibly do more than when, there when I return. I desire to develop this into a church at some point, but God will need to write, raise up a man. They have to use the Burmese language there. Wow, so many different language groups. However, the need is great. Orphanage in Pa Den Thai. As many of you know, we have worked closely. I have no idea if that's how you say that. So here it is. As many of you uh, know, we have worked closely with an orphanage at Pa Deng Thai. We have an influence in this orphanage, but the orphanage is not directly part of our ministry, though most of those associated with the orphanage are part of our church. I want to give a special thank you to the Senior Saints class at West Park Baptist Church in Rockwell, North Carolina. They supplied funds recently to buy umbrellas for all the kids in the, at the orphanage. This will be a tremendous blessing when the rainy season starts in May. Speaking of West Park Baptist Church, I also want to give a thank you to another one of their ministries that is overseen by my friend, Evangelist Craig Bryan, called Ron Middleton Missions Outreach. 
They have helped regularly supply this orphanage and have even paid for some big projects like a chicken coop and a fish pond. They have helped supply financially uh, for Brother Sampson, who runs the orphanage, and my right-hand helper, Pran, too. They, must have all, they, all, they have also helped start nine churches not too far across the border from us in Burma by sending monthly funds to those men, along with some other Southeast Asian countries. We appreciate all the help that they have given to us in this part of the world. Missionary Todd Painter. All right, let's pray. Lord, I do thank you for Brother Painter and his uh, uh, missionary's heart. I know he was a pastor, and now he's a missionary and doing a great job. I pray that you'll uh, help him get his health back so he can go back to the field. Uh, his heart's definitely there. I just pray that you'll bless him. Uh, we thank you for Harvest Baptist Church. pray you'll bless him with the meeting tonight and help us to respond to the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Let's go to Romans chapter 14. It's always good to hear how Brother Painter's doing. He's doing a, such a good job. It's always been that way. When I was in college, he was in college and uh, just had a, had a big heart for his Marshall bus route. That's a town about 30 minutes east of uh, Longview where we were. So he would run it every week in Marshall, Texas and uh, just, just love the people there and just has a big heart. And um, Amen. Romans chapter 14, we'll begin with verse 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. It says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. I pray that you'd please... Uh, begin to work on our hearts, Lord. Help us to take a look at our Christian life, and Lord, be honest, and let the Holy Spirit point out to us what you have in mind, how you want us to grow, and how you want us to, to implement and tweak and uh, change, Lord. Help us, Lord, to always have that heart, Lord, uh, that we're always constantly growing until the day we die. We're always growing in the Lord. I pray that you please speak to us tonight, teach us something from your word, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe the the really successful Christians are the ones who are constantly growing. They never, like my uh, preacher growing up, he said, never arrive, always be arriving. Always be arriving. Always be on the trajectory of learning and growing. And, and if a Christian ever gets to the point where they think, you know, I'm, I'm, I've arrived, uh, they're, they're, they begin their downhill uh, ascent or descent, uh, rather. So, amen. All right, we're on the carriage quality of deference. Let's, uh, let's go through the... the the definition in the verse a couple times, and we'll do a little review uh, of, of what we talked about last week, and then get into our, our lesson. So let's start with the definition, and then the verse uh, there on the front. It says, deference, ready? Limiting my freedom in order not to offend the taste of those God has called me to serve. Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Again, deference, limiting my freedom in order not to offend the tastes of those God has called me to serve. Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. One more time. Deference. Limiting my freedom in order not to offend the taste of those God has called me to serve. Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. And last week we were talking about the, in nature, the eastern box turtle and learning some things about that. And then in the, the scriptures in Acts chapter 15, you don't have to turn there, but we were talking about in Acts chapter 15, it's the, it's the chapter where it talks about the, 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 the Gentiles 
were getting saved, but then some, some, uh, some Jews were, had gotten saved and had gone to where they were working with the Gentiles, and they were saying that they needed to be circumcised uh, in order to, to be saved. And, and Paul, he confronted these, these folks and say, hey, listen, circumcision is a part of the law, and you're asking people to do a part of the law and to fulfill the Jewish law and to, for salvation, and they were, y'all couldn't, you all couldn't do it, and, and neither could we, uh, or neither could they. And it was Jesus Christ who, who was the one who saved us. And so they brought this, this question of the circumcision and certain uh, of, of things of the, of the Jewish law, they brought it to the apostles there in Jerusalem, and they had a, a council about it. And so uh, they, they, they listened with an open mind. James, he finally stood up and he, he explained the situation and he, he instructed them, hey, listen, tell the Gentile believers this. Because you have to understand that the Jews, they, they had been in, it's, it's like being raised, if you, if you know of, of people who've been raised in a Christian home, They're, they've been raised a certain way, but then you have others who haven't been raised in a Christian home. Certain things have been allowed in, in, in the, the non-Christian home that, that person's life. Some things have not been allowed, or more, maybe more sheltered, you would call them, in the person li- raised in a Christian home. And so there, there's, there's got to be a way for both of them to be able to come to church in the same place and be able to help each other grow in the Lord and, and, and function. Well, the Gentiles, are, are, they, they grew up pretty much without the law, the law being the Bible. They're, they grew up lawless, kind of uh, whatever, you know, it's the judge's philosophy. Whatever seems right in my own eyes, I'm going to do it. Well, the, the, the Jews, they, were, they grew up with these restrictions and with these restraints and with these laws, and, and, but, but it, they believed in that was their salvation. Now, when they got saved, they, they learned that it was Jesus Christ who fulfilled all that. So what do they do? How do they, how do they come to a compromise? How do they come to a place where they can fellowship and not be an offense to each other? Well, James, he gives them four guidelines. He says, number one, abstain from meats offered to idols. He says, number two, abstain from fornication or carnal lifestyle. He's, he's, he's addressing, you know, uh, meats offered to idols. Thou shalt have, not have any of the other gods before me. You know, abstain from me, from a fornication, a carnal lifestyle would be thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't do things like that. He also said uh, abstain from things strangled. He also said abstain from eating rare or bloody meats. And so he gave them some guidelines that, that would help to, to help them have fellowship as Gentile believers and Jewish believers. And so it's very important for, for us, you know, the, the Christian life is all about living for others it's not all about us and what we think is right well i don't have i don't see anything wrong with this so uh they can just they can just choke on it i don't care that's that's not a that's not a christ-like attitude Uh, i mean if 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 it comes up that that something is offensive or something is is troubling a, a brother or sister in christ especially but then also especially the the unsaved world and it's causing confusion god is not the author of confusion and if it causes any any question in their minds uh then we as as a mature christian we ought to be able to step back and say you know what i'm like i'm gonna defer i'm I'm gonna not do that um what what it what it was one of the requirements of of a bishop that paul said to timothy he said blameless blameless was one of the the criteria of, of a pastor or a bishop. That means that, that anybody, uh, if, if something wrong were to happen, the, the preacher would never even enter into their minds. He lives such, the bishop lives such a high standard and such, so, so close to, to the, the, the scriptures as he can that, that if they're, they're trying to figure out who, who did this, it's not the preacher, blameless. Like he, he, he protects himself so much. And every one of us Christians, we ought to strive to live that way. Well, I'm not going to be a bishop. I'm not going to be a preacher. No, but, but you, you, you out there, how many, how many times uh, uh, either on your bus route or, or out in your community, they know you're a Christian. I don't know if you've ever been called preacher out there. Hey, preacher, you're not a preacher, not a pastor. But the Bible says that we're supposed to go into all the world and what? Preach the gospel. Have you ever preached the gospel out there? Then you're a preacher. Ladies, (laughs) go get them. (laughs) We're all preaching. 
Pre preaching is simply proclaiming. I mean, you could, you could walk through the store, ladies, in your, in your Christian dress and be preaching. Never say a word. So it's very important that we, that we, that we if we're going to, to live as close to the Word of God as we can and practice that, it'd be, be, it's very important that we, that we proclaim the right kind of message. And, and not be a stumbling block, not cause confusion, not, not, uh, um, not cause people to, to be able to suspect that we be blameless, that we have that high standard. So let's, let's go to the, to the application uh, quickly. It says, you may be able to distinguish what is right from wrong, right from wrong, but can you distinguish what is right from right? You may be able to distinguish what is right from wrong, what is black and white. But can you distinguish what is right from what is right? Good, better, be best, never let it rest till you're good as your better and your better as your best. But can you distinguish between what is better and better or what is best and what is more best? I know that's grammatically bad, but, but there, there's those intricacies, there's those situations where we've got to have the discernment of the Holy Spirit in a tender heart, and even if it means I've got to inconvenience myself, I need to, 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 to make myself uncomfortable so that I don't offend a brother or, uh, or sister in Christ, or I don't, don't uh, confuse a young believer or even an unsaved person and, and, and lead them down a path that's going to that's gonna hurt them. I need to be able to do that. That's what a mature Christian is able to do, is able to, to take maybe things that, that, that they have never even thought about, and then but question them and ask them, is this the right course of action? Should I really be doing this? And be able to say, you know what? If it offends somebody, then I won't do it. I won't, I won't, I won't get offended, and I won't get mad at them because I want to honor him, and I want my testimony to be strong for Jesus Christ. It's not about me. It's about helping them. Number one, deference is limiting my freedom. Limiting my freedom in order not to offend the tastes or the convictions of those God has called me to serve. God has called us to serve other Christians. He's called us to serve other believers. And it's limiting my freedoms. We talked about how, how uh, on Sunday we, we mentioned how that, how that uh, there may be some freedoms. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but all things edify not. Just because it's lawful doesn't mean that I should participate in it. It doesn't mean that, that, that I, I, I need to, 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 be a, to, to be a partaker in that thing because other people are watching and other people, it, 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 it puts a question in their mind and it, and it points them. Maybe, maybe they're, going, they're, they're trying to grow in the Lord and it points them in, into a direction that, that, uh, that, 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 that confuses them. Number two, the alternative to deference is defending my right to participate in a questionable activity. The alternative to deferent, deference is defending my right to participate in a questionable activity. See, a mature Christian, when the Holy Spirit pricks their heart, or when something is mentioned from, from, from the pulpit, or they're at a conference and the, the preacher, he, he, he touches on a subject. Their, their, their spirit is so sensitive. They're, they're like, Lord, please, please, I want to be more like Christ. And so when that, that, the, the Lord touches that, that area, they step back and they take it home and they consider, say, Lord, they, they put it on the altar, say, Lord, is this something I should give up? I'm willing to give it up because I want to be more like Christ. But the, the person who doesn't have that deference, they defend their right. What's wrong with? Said it many times. Anytime you preface a, 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 a noun with what's wrong with or a, a, an action with what's wrong with, it's, it's wrong. What sort of is not a faith is sin, or else you wouldn't be asking the question. So the alternative to deference is defending my right to participate in a questionable activity. What is the idiosyncrasies? What is one of the idiosyncrasies of sin? 
what is it, Miss England? Selfishness. Close. It's all about me. If you, if you look, at, look at the sins mentioned in the Bible, it is self-gratification. It's about me. It's about me. So when I defend my right to participate in a questionable activity, I've got to ask myself, what's the motive behind it? What's the spirit behind that? That, that I would not be willing to give that up because it would, it would adversely affect me. I've got, to, I've got to look at that. If I want to be a mature Christian, if I want to be a strong Christian, if I want to have a great, strong impact for the Lord Jesus Christ, I've got to be willing to put those things on the altar and say, you know, Lord, if you don't want me to do that, I won't do that. I won't do that. Psalms 101, we read that in, in my Sunday school class every Sunday morning. There's a verse in there that when I read in, 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 in high school, when I read in, uh, I'm sorry, in college, the Lord pricked my heart. When I was a teenager, I liked to match my, my shirts with my hats. I loved uh, uh, professional ball caps. I had a LSU and a New York Knicks and um, just a variety, probably about eight or ten of them. And uh, I, I would match shirts with them and, and uh, just go about my day and have fun. And, well, they were, I was reading in, in college one Sunday morning, and I was reading Psalms 101, and the verse says, um, I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. That word cleave means to grab a hold of and, and hold on. And whenever I read that, the Holy Spirit said, you know, what about your hat? And the first, my first reaction was, oh, man, I spent a lot of money on those. The resistance. Yeah. Hats are not a sin, are they? Yeah. But the Lord, he's, he, he, he was, what about your hats? And I, I mean, if, if I'm not, yeah, they cleave to your head, but if you can't get rid of them, they're cleaving to your heart. And God's trying to point that out, and that's what he was trying to point out in me. So I took my box cutter from Super One, the grocery store, and I sliced them all up, and I threw them away. They're probably about $200, $200 $300 worth of hats. I'm not against people who wear. It's just something that the Lord, he dealt on my heart about something that was cleaving to my heart. He wanted that area of my heart. He wanted to know would I be willing to give that up, and I, I, I did not want to confuse him, and I'm not saying this for self-glory. It's just this a matter of something that's not sinful. I mean, I, I have Grass Lake hats. I wear those. I, you know, I have shirts that have teams on them. My, my, my wife has an ungodly Dallas Cowboy shirt. That's wickedness. Wickedness. Pray for her that she repents. Or maybe did I hide that? Did, didn't I burn that one? No, but, but it was something that was cleaving to my heart, something that, that the Lord, he, he, just, he just asked a question about that. And, and, and you'll find that when the Lord deals on, on the heart or he's dealing with somebody, he'll usually ask them questions. He'll usually ask questions and get their mind to think. And he asked me that question, what about your hats? And I wanted, to, I wanted him to know that there was nothing between, not, not even my hats. If he wanted, he will. You want me to give them up? I'll give them up. It's not about the hats. It's about, I want him to know that there's nothing between him and I. So the alternative to deference is defending my right to participate in a questionable activity. How many Christians would have defended their right? What's wrong with? It's, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it's you, it's us as Christians communicating to him, where is our heart? Is it more in love? Lovest thou me more than these? Number three, this defense usually involves trying to prove that the activity is acceptable, but the real point of the matter is not the activity at all. It's a matter of the heart. Number four, the real point of the matter is this. Are you willing to cause a weaker Christian to stumble? Are you willing to cause a weaker Christian to stumble? If this is a situation where, where, where uh, you participated in, in a certain activity or you've always done a certain thing or you've always you know, worn something or watched something or did whatever, just fill in the blank, 
and and something comes up that that uh, that that it, it you know somebody's confused about it or that they're they're struggling spiritually and a mature christian would be saying you know what am i if i'm causing this christian to stumble i need to cut this out of my life because it's it's not helping them it's not helping them it's kind of like if if uh, my dad he grew up um he grew up as a diabetic and uh, if you know anything about diabetes you need to watch your blood sugar and so if you grow up with a diabetic well then you know somebody who's married to a diabetic or somebody who struggles with that uh, it would be wise for that person to to try to avoid saying hey let's have ice cream every night it's not good for them it's not good for their body it would it would it would be a, a simple way for them to say you know what let's have let's have some let's have some uh, uh, you know fruit or let's have uh, some water or, or some other alternative that wouldn't be that wouldn't be detrimental to them and it's a matter of of helping spiritually not not causing another Christian to stumble number five when you force someone to go against their convictions or you could say their conscience when you force someone to go against their convictions a deeply held not a deeply embedded non-negotiable belief you're forcing them to sin against the bible you're forcing them to sin against the lord and you're forcing them to sin against their god established authorities i have here parents and you could uh, you could you could include, you know, pastor. You could, you can include a, a, a just a variety of, of things. But when you force somebody, when 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 you, when when Christians just just bulldoze over their way and their will uh, to, uh, with the people around them, it, it's it. It doesn't help them grow spiritually. It doesn't help them to be strong in the Lord. What they're doing is you're, they're cause, you're causing a person to stumble. Number six: How to distinguish between right and right. How to distinguish between right and right. Let's go to our text. Romans 14, verse 19, it says, Let us, let us therefore follow after things which make, make for peace. Letter A, seek the peace. Seek the peace. If it, if it causes contention or if it causes strife or it causes uh, some kind of uh, a lack of peace in the whole situation, a mature Christian would be able to say, you know what? It's causing some tension. I feel it's causing a rift. I feel like it's 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 causing some tension. I'll not push it. Let me let's back off. Let's 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 table it. We'll talk about it later and we'll go on. That's Christ like. Christ Christ what what did they say about the mind of Christ? They said it says uh, uh, do, do don't don't um, Philippians 2. Let's look at it. Philippians 2. I don't know my mind. Philippians 2, verse 2, it says, Fulfill you my joy that you may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. The first ingredient of, of possessing the mind of Christ or the mindset of Christ or the thinking that Christ possessed was let nothing be done through strife. Can you ever find an example where Jesus did something in his earthly ministry by causing tension outside of making the core, the, the whips, and whipping the Pharisees. But you understand the reasons behind that was that the Pharisees were doing business in the place that was reserved for the Gentiles to come. They were crowding out the Gentiles. They were saying, Gentiles, you're not welcome. They were being racist. That's what they were being. They were being racist and saying, y'all aren't welcome here at the temple. We're going to put our business where it's your place to pray. No, you get out of here because you're not welcome. That, that ticked Jesus off because he's, he, he, he came to save the whole world, Amen. not just Israel. Right. And so that's why he did that. So there was no, there was, if that was strife, uh, um, that was justified strife. But, he, but other, than, other than that, he, let nothing be done through strife. And then it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this kind of thinking, this mindset be in you. And so if there is a lack of peace, a mature Christian will, will recognize that and say, you know what? I'm going to step back. I'm going to step back. I'm going to yield. I'm going to yield. Well, what if the other person gets their way? That's between them and God. That's between them and God. But I'm going to, I'm going to be the mature Christian. I'm going to step back. All right. Okay, Lord. 
Let's keep reading. Verse 20, it says, For meat, I'm sorry, let us therefore follow after things which make for peace, verse 19, and there things wherewith one may edify another. Let it be, seek things whereby one may edify another. That word edify, the, the, the word is to build up. It means to build up. In Spanish, that is edificar. It uses edify, E-D-I-F-I-C-A-R, is the Spanish word for to build up. And that's the word edify, is to build up. And so if, if well, well uh, if, if tearing down is, is a bad thing, right? Keeping it stagnant, is that a bad thing? Meaning, meaning okay, we have, we have tearing down, we have stagnant, we have building up, okay? So tearing down is a bad thing, correct? What if we keep it stagnant? We're not, we, we're, we're, we don't tear it down, but we don't build it up. Is that a bad thing? He said, he said edify. So if it doesn't build up, even though it doesn't either, it doesn't tear it down or, or, or build it up, that's still a bad thing. That's something that, no, our goal is to edify. Our, the way we live and the way we act and the way we speak and everything that we do should be in such a way where we're building, where we are building, where we are showing, where we are, we're being an example. We're, we're causing people to take a step towards Jesus Christ just by being in our presence. And we should seek things whereby we may edify others around us. Keep reading. Verse 20, it says, For me destroyeth not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth. Let her see how to distinguish between right and right. We, we should avoid anything that would cause him to stumble. To stumble. It, again, the Christian life is about others. The Christian life is about knowing if you're a nurse and you go to your wing and you have your patients that you're taking care of, you know the vitals of the people that you're looking, looking after, do, do you not? You know the vitals. Well, spiritually speaking, we should know the vitals of, of our brothers and sisters in Christ and know, hey, listen, you know, I know I ha they, had, they had this kind of background, and, and you know, I, I, I feel like you know, if I were to participate in this kind of activity, this, this would remind them of, of, of a direction uh, and a time in their life that, that might, uh, might be a struggle for them. I need to say no. I, you know, I need to cut that out so I don't hurt them. It's avoiding anything that would cause that person to stumble. It's, it's, it's thinking about them. Letter D. Letter D. Avoid anything that would cause him to be offended. Cause him to be offended. To be hurt. To be, to be confused. To, to cause him to question. Huh? I mean, it, it amazes me. Sometimes on Facebook, I'll, I'll see... There's there's a friend of mine um, from some years ago, and uh, they were at a that they were at a, um, a birthday party for their daughter, and they posted on Facebook where this birthday party was, and and I, I was like, huh? Because in the background of this was a was the neon lights with the name of a liquor right there. I'm thinking, are they in a bar? I mean, nothing else told you where they were. That's just the first, and it, it shocked me. I'm thinking, if I'm a Christian and I know these people, surely they wouldn't go there. But it looks like it. What if, what if somebody, what if somebody else was just glancing at it and they're a weaker Christian? They, you know, well, they went to, they went to a, a, a bar for for their birthday. What would they, what would they think? If they're trying to come and they're trying to grow in the faith and they're trying to get away from that old crowd and they're trying to, trying to grow in the Lord and they're trying to, to, to separate themselves from that old lifestyle and grow and get strong, and then they see this brother, he's posting on Facebook that he took his daughter to, to what looked like a bar. It was actually a, a restaurant that you know, has that around. And it, it's just confusing. It, it puts a question in the people's mind. 
So we, we, it's just think, a mature Christian, they look at those things. They, they, they avoid anything that would cause a brother to be offended. Oh, my, my Christian life's being judged by everybody. Is it all about us or is it about Jesus Christ? Who are we living for? We're living for Jesus Christ, letter E. Avoid anything that would weaken him in his faith. It says, it is good neither to eat, eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Avoid anything that would weaken him in his faith. That would weaken him in his faith. That would, that would cause him to question and say, I thought Christians didn't do that. That's, that's, that's where a mature Christian would say, whoa, all right, that's weakening their faith. And that's where a mature Christian would say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I want to beg you to forgive me. I, I, I need to make that right. I was wrong. You're right. It's being very, very conscientious and very tender with especially young ones in the faith. And I'm, talk, I'm not talking young in age. I'm talking about young in believing, young in spiritual, spiritual age. Is not confusing them, helping them get a good footing of how to walk the Christian life. They're going to have struggles as it is without our help tripping them. So like those, like those uh, bullies in school with the little kids passing by, the big ones will stick their leg out and cause the little ones to fall. It's like, I don't want to be that kind of Christian. I don't want to be that kind of Christian. Number seven, examples. Here's some examples. Of things that aren't sin, but it's discerning what's between what's right and what's right. Pastor and campaign teams. Pastor and campaign teams. Here's the story behind it. Pastor Ortiz was going to do a spring campaign. And you know that in the Spanish world, soccer is king. Soccer is yeah, that little ball in that big old field, they worship it. And in Mexico, a lot, of their, a lot of the members there, they were from Mexico. And so he said, let's have these two teams. And he said, let's have uh, the, uh, and he named a, a team from Mexico, and he named this other team from Mexico. And you should have heard the tension because there was people on this side who were, who were fans of this team in real life and they weren't about in church to be on a team that identified with their arch rival. It was throwdown time. Ooh, you think, big deal? It's for visitors and seeing people saved. Who cares? But I'm not wearing my, those team colors because I am, I am, I am, I am. That's my team. And, and it, he's like, you know what? How about, how about we just name them animals? And so we called them the eagles, and we called them something else. We just, that's a sign of a mature Christian. That's a sign of where, where, you know, it's not a sin, but it's knowing how to discern right from what's right. And if it's going to cause strife and tension, just say, you know, what, let's back up. Let's, let's just rethink this. It's just not worth it. Here's, here's something else. Papaw buddy and, next one, papaw buddy and dice. When I would go to Papa Buddy's house growing up, we, I always remember we played the game Sorry. Why? What is not in the game of Sorry? Dice. Why in the world? What's wrong with dice? Papa Buddy used to be a bouncer at a bar. And that's where he got saved from. And it reminded him of that life. And so in his home, uh-uh. No gambling, no dice, nothing that even looks like it. And so every time we went to Grandma and Grandpa's house, we would play sorry because you play with cards. Not, you just play with the sorry cards, 2, 4, and 12, and 10, and all of that. That's, that's what we played at Grandma, Grandma White's house. Is dice a sin? No. Are playing cards a sin? But for him, it reminded him of Something that really gripped his heart. Really, it was an exciting time of his life, and he, he, was, he was running from that. He was running from that for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life, he did not want to go back to that because it had that strong of a hold on him. So, Grandma, she said, okay, we'll just play this game. No big deal. 
Next, guys and girls alone in a room together. Guys and girls alone in a room together. Is it a sin for a guy and a girl to be in alone, alone in a room together? No. But you stay there long enough, people start wondering. And the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. And so you don't want to weaken people's faith. You don't want to cause them to blame you. You don't want to cause people to talk. People do talk. And so you do that to, to not cause somebody to stumble. It's limiting my freedom in order not to offend the taste of those God has called me to serve. Here's another one. Certain words of disgust. Certain words of disgust. And I'm not talking about the dirty four-letter words. I'm just talking about stuff that are yeah, kind of borderline or like right on the edge. Or even, you know, some people, it, it, I mean, if they, um, I won't say any of them, but, but there's certain words where it's just, you know, if, it, if you know it, it hurts somebody or if, it, if, if you know, that's something they used to say in the past and, and when they were in a weaker state of Christianity, well, then let's, let's do our best to not try to give them a smell of that again. All right, next, Ave Maria. Ave Maria. Ave Maria is a Christmas song that is very, very popular. And, but it is a Catholic song. And so with, when I would have our Spanish folks at our house down in Texas, if they were ever coming to visit, like a, we had team get together sometimes at the house, I would make sure that if there was any music played, there was never that song on because that is a Catholic song. That is their background. I did not want them to, them to think that I was endorsing something that they were coming out of. I wanted to do something that would reinforce their faith. So I would not, I have a couple versions of that uh, in various CDs, but when I was with them, I would, on purpose, you know, make sure that song does not get played. Is it a sin to play it? No, it's a beautiful song. I believe God gave every piece of music that is perverted here on earth, God gave it to somebody for his honor and glory. They just perverted it. God perverted it. Or, I'm sorry, Satan perverted it. Forgive me. Uh, Satan perverted it. But it was created, it was given to that person for God's glory, but it's been perverted. And I believe that's the same song, but it's been perverted. Well, if people are struggling with that, if, if they're, they, are, they are coming out of the Catholicism, then I don't want to give them anything that would make them smell or remember anything of that lifestyle. I want to try to help them out. Here's another one. Uh, Via Dolorosa, that's another one. I, I mentioned that recently. Um, here's a, uh, the last one, uh, Six Flags. Six Flags. When I was in high school, uh, again, if you, if you go to Six Flags, that's great. Happy for you before you but when i was in high school my my youth pastor he did a campaign and and he he, he did a push for the kid the young people to, to to do you know spiritual emphasis you know seeing people saved seeing visitors brought to church you know their quiet time you know the whole nine yards and he said those who excel and those who you know reach this certain mark i'm going to take you to six flags and, he, and we went to Six Flags as a, as a teen group, and when we got into the lines and we were forced to watch the, the, the junk music videos that are in the lines. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. And when we got back, he's like, you know what, I want to apologize to everybody. I've been pushing y'all to be spiritual for the last six weeks, and uh, I just took you to a place where in one line waiting two hours to ride the Texas Giant, you had to watch that music video and all the, all of the junk that was being displayed on there. And I undid in two hours everything that I pushed you to try to do. And I apologize. I apologize. My, I've never taken my kids to Six Flags because of that, because I know it's there. I did, I've even checked it up later on. It's still there. There was a time where we went to Disney World and uh, we were sent by Make-A-Wish to go to Disney World and the refreshing thing about that was there wasn't that in the lines. You, you weren't forced to watch that. I mean, everywhere you turn, it's there. I don't want to deal with that. All you got to give our carnal mind is a picture yeah. of junk. Right. And the brain, the carnal mind will do the rest. And I don't want to do that to my children. So 
That's an example. It's not a sin. If somebody chooses to participate in that, it's not a sin. You're not going to go to hell. You're not going to lose your salvation. And I probably won't even scold you. I won't scold you because that's your own business. But a mature Christian, if they know that they're dealing with young Christians and they're trying to help them grow along, they'll be wise enough and astute enough to say, you know what? I'm not going to participate in it because I don't want it to adversely affect them. Let's hurry. Number Number eight, true love will always show deference. True love, if a person truly loves the Lord, it's not about them, it's about him. It's about helping that person grow into a stronger relationship with Christ. True love will always show deference. Number nine, the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb. Here's my rule of thumb that I try to live by. <clears throat> always defer to the higher or stricter standard. If I come across somebody or a family or a person and they have a higher standard in a certain area, I will defer to their higher standard because I don't want to offend them. I do not want to bring them down. I do not want them to ever remember Kelly Daniel as he weakened my faith. If he, if, if he were to have to, to, to stand in a judgment before God and he were to have to give an honest opinion about Kelly Daniel and his, his five minutes, ten minutes, one hour with, with me, I do not want him to say to God, you know what, you know, I, I asked him if we couldn't do that and he kind of blew me off. I wouldn't want that to be said to God. So the rule of thumb Always defer to the higher or the stricter standard. Number 10, it is not just about you and what you like and want. It is not just about you and what you like and want. You are responsible for the growth, growth and maturity of the Christians around you. It is not just about you and what you like and want. You are responsible for the growth and maturity of the Christians around you. Do you understand why before and after the service I have playing the music that we have playing? Because I want to I have a very high standard to where if anybody has a weakness in a certain area, I am not getting close to catering to it. I want to try to pull everybody up. I want to try to pull everybody to, to, a, to a higher standard and protect everybody so that your spirit can walk in here and say, I'm not going to come in here and be tempted with something I'm struggling. Why, why, I, why do I appreciate the fact that, that, that our ladies, that, that, that you dress so modestly and you dress so appropriately and, and the men you, you dress up for church and and you really try to live because why because you're going to have people here who are younger christians i want them to come in and feel i'm safe here spiritually i'm safe i don't feel like i'm coming here and then i'm leaving with thoughts in my mind because i saw that lady and and and, and you know she was like mm, yeah mm. and then they're thinking about that at home instead of the message from the word of god that's, that's deference. That's, that's just limiting my freedom. Is it a sin? Is it going to send that person to hell if they dress that way? No. But it sure isn't going to strengthen somebody else's faith. That's right. it's, going to, it's going to weaken them. And that God says, that's, that's offensive to me. Yeah. You're supposed to edify. We're supposed to edify. So it's not just about you and what you like and want. You're responsible for the growth and maturity of the Christians around you. Do not do things that would intentionally weaken them. Let's go back to Romans 14. I'll read verse 21. It says, It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine. If eating flesh weakens somebody's faith, then a mature Christian will say, You know what? I'll not do that. I'll eat only salad. And then rush home afterwards and go get a, get a big old steak. Get a burger. Get a burger. No, but, but it's, it's just being sensitive. If a person truly has that sincerely held belief and, and it's going to weaken their faith, then a mature Christian would be, would be soft-hearted, tender-hearted enough to say, you know what, I'll, I'll not do it then. I'll not do it. I'm not going to make a fuss about it. It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine or anywhere, anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Verse 23, it says, And he that doubteth is damned of Eve because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If there's a doubt about it, 
the Bible says you're not to do it. If you go forward and act, and you 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 dismiss that doubt and, and do it anyways, God calls it a sin. Number eleven. How can you tell if you weakened a fellow Christian? How can you tell if you weakened a fellow Christian? How can you tell? You cannot. You cannot tell. How can you avoid weakening them? Use the rule of thumb. Number nine, what's the rule of thumb? Always defer to the higher or stricter standard. Always defer. Because it's, all, it's, a, it's about helping people grow in Christ. It's about them becoming stronger in the faith. One of the reasons why a wise parent would... Okay, recently we've had... We've had um, this bill in Florida that has been, that Ron DeSantis has, has been pushing through Congress. And, uh, and um, it's, it's about this education bill, how that uh, the, the kindergarten teachers, first grade, third, second grade, third grade teachers um, are not allowed to speak of uh, certain private matters with their students. Um, are y'all aware of that one? Everybody? No? Okay. Private matters meaning um, mm, private matters. <laughs> um, that kind of private matters. Um, and people are all up in arms. Oh, my God. Oh. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, you want to, you want to defer to the higher standard. You want to, it's, it's not an area for them. It's, it's, a, it's an area for the, for the parents. You de- defer to the higher, higher standard. You're, 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 it's about growing people. It's about uh, um, making sure you don't weaken their faith. It's about making sure that they're, they're getting uh, good education as a young Christian and they're not being uh, put on shaking uh, sound, sand. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. I pray, Lord, please help us, Lord, as your children. Help us, Lord, as, as your people. Uh, help us to have tender hearts. Lord, help us to, to be conscientious of those around us, Lord. Help us to be conscientious of of the things that, that we post online, the things that we say or the things that we do or the things that we participate in, that we ask ourselves, Lord, is, is this going to is this going to cause somebody to stumble? Is this going to cause somebody to be weakened in the faith? Is this going to tempt somebody? Is, it, is this something that uh, uh, just to, to ask, ourse- ask ourselves, think twice about it, just for your testimony's sake but then also those christians who are looking at us and and uh, they might be offended or they might be um, they might stumble they might be caused to to look at something or see something or think about something that that wouldn't be pleasing to you lord help us lord help us lord help us to grow in our faith Lord, help us to to apply this quality of deference and limit our freedoms. You won't send us to hell, but it will hurt other Christians. And it will definitely trickle down and cause less people to go to heaven because of people's weaker faith down the line. I pray, Lord, please help us to live for others. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Come have Miss Melissa play hymn of invitation. I encourage you to come and use the altar. Just ask the Lord. If the Lord has laid on your heart anything that you might need to say, you know what? We need to take that out of our life. We need to change this. We need to, to you know, from here on out, we, we need to, to, to do something differently or, or change course. That we be a mature Christian. We'd be willing to say, you know what, Lord? That's what I want. I want to. I want to do live a life that would honor you and please you. And if this doesn't please you, then I don't want any part of it. I give it to you. I put it on the altar. Let's pray.
Let's grab our hymn books and go to number 304. And we'll sing the first and last verse of Nothing Between, number 304. So that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between, nothing between even many hard trials. Though Watching with prayer and much self-denial, I'll triumph at last with nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. May our heart's prayer be that everybody who comes in contact with our Christian life is, is pointed to Jesus. In everything that we do, in everything that we do, and um, takes a takes a truly humble Christian to be able to to step back and and to to analyze analyze their life and uh, to be able to make changes. Pastor Gray down in Texas, uh, he said something in a message one time um, a couple years ago. He says every six months, every six months, he says I do a reassessment. Of, and he used this area. He says, I do a reassessment of my music. I'll ask, I'll ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything that you're un- displeased with in this area? Like if the Lord, if the Lord takes, his, takes the peace away about a certain matter, because it's all about him. It's about him and, and having that close relationship with him. It's, it's not about what he wants. And, uh, and I think as Christians, we would... Our impact would grow. Our, our our influence in the world would grow if if the Lord knew that we were that tender-hearted and that we were that um, um, what do you call it delicate or that sensitive to what He would prefer. What He would prefer. Amen. Thank you so much for your for your time. And uh, let's pray and uh, we'll get going. Amen. Amen. Brother uh, Brother Tompkins, do you mind praying for us, please?